And lastly is fight like a pro. Fight like a pro. In marriage there's two kinds of fights. There's those that are like street fighting with no rules and there is a fighting like a boxer. Boxer is a pro. They don't, they don't be, they don't hit under the belt. They have a referee. They don't just go swinging anywhere they want to hit. They have a certain time where they can hit and then they have to stop, go to the corner, get you know kind of fixed up and go at it again 12 times. And after they win the fight, they hug the other opponent. They don't stab him to death. Now in street fight, how, what are the rules? Kill the other guy. You look for anything. The, the rock is the weapon of choice. You have a knife on you, awesome. It makes it faster. You have a gun, man, it'll make it quicker. And many people fight in their marriage like a street fight. There's no rules. You can say whatever, you can curse, you can exaggerate, you can do whatever and then they wonder why is the marriage so beaten up? Because you're street fighting. There's those who are religious, they say, well, perfect marriage has no fights. Are you crazy? Even if you will be married to someone just like you, you will still fight. Marriage is good when people fight. But when you fight like a pro, not like a street fight. So let me just give you a few tips on how to fight like a pro. One, let's read the verse. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, it says the following. Be angry. Somebody say, be. be. Come on, everybody say, be, be. angry. Some of you, that probably, that's probably the only verse in the Bible you're fulfilling on a daily basis. <laughs> you're like, I did not know the Bible tells me to be angry. It doesn't have to tell me that I'm doing that by myself just fine. <laughs> How many you find this verse is very easy to live by? <laughs> Thou shalt not lie in the church. The Bible says, be angry. You're like, Amen! <laughs> Bible is not against you being angry. If God would be against you being angry, then God being angry would be, God would be a sinner. God gets angry. Anger is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with being angry. Bible tells you, be angry. If you see injustice, be angry. If your spouse keeps leaving those dirty shoes and then dirty socks and underwears, be angry. If you ask them to fix and clean those dishes, be angry. But the problem is not with that. The problem is it says next thing, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your wrath nor give place to the devil. It means if we stay angry through the night, we give place to the devil by next morning. So let me give you a practical tip. Number one, don't go to sleep angry. Stay up and fight. Do not ever go to sleep angry. Stay up and fight. Now, if you're a husband and you love sleep, admit you're wrong and go to sleep. <laughs> I mentioned that uh, I'm usually right. Every argument with my wife, I'm always right. She married Mr. Right. She didn't know my first name was always. <laughs> always right. But I'm usually right until 9 o'clock. When it comes to 9 p.m., there's a possibility I might be wrong. Uh, by 9.30, there's a very high chance I might be wrong. By 10 o'clock, she's 100% right, I'm wrong. 10.30, this is when, you know, I'm like, I'm already humbled that I am wrong. 11.30, I'm like Apostle Peter, oh, I'm such a sinner, depart from me, Lord. <laughs> when I was, when we just got married, I, I wasn't like that. I, during our, I remember a, an argument that I'll never forget because this is the only time I fell asleep when she was still angry. We had an argument that started with during the morning and, and I was so like, I, I, I didn't love sleep at the time. I love to be right more than, than anything. And so instead of fixing the issue right away I tried to say well it's her fault she needs to apologize first and I'm not gonna apologize why because she, out of this argument she is responsible for 95 percent I'm responsible for for five the five should never apologize in front of 95 I know my math 
So there I am sitting on the couch, me and I'm not talking to her. And of course, she's not talking to me. And so the time comes to about six o'clock. And I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, it is three hours. It'll take us three hours to fix this. Maybe I should begin. So I come out and I was like, you know what? Uh, I really think that what you did was wrong today, which is not a best way to start to finish the argument. And so uh, she's not talking. I was like, well, great. You don't want to talk? I'm not going to talk either. So I turn around on the bed. I'm facing the wall. And I'm trying to pretend that I'm not breathing, not to give her the satisfaction that I'm alive. If you, when you're married, you, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. And so, and I'm not even breathing. She, she's like, you're still there? No. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> like, you, what, you want to talk? What is there to talk about? There's nothing to talk about. I was like, great, nothing to talk about. So, nine o'clock hits, nothing to talk about. This deep silence. And I accidentally fell asleep. With me, I can fall asleep with anything and everything. So it wasn't hard, especially when it's tense, I fall asleep faster. A woman, she cannot usually fall asleep just like that. So I fell asleep and then I wake up to somebody hitting me in my ribs. Pow! And I woke up and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> who, who, who is here in the house? He's like, you loser, it's me. <laughs> and so now we're arguing about the fact that I fell asleep. We're not arguing about whatever happened in the morning. That's not important. What's important is how dare you fell asleep. You don't love me. You don't care about this relationship. You, and I was like, can we talk about what happened in the morning? That doesn't matter now. We have a bigger issues at hand. You fell asleep. I was like, woman, I'm so sorry. I, I was like, I was trying to stay awake to wait until you open up. You didn't want to talk to me, so I fell asleep. And so we, we fixed it. I apologize, repented of, of everything I've done thought of doing, didn't do everything, took the blame for myself, for everybody and then she recognized after that that uh, it was a little bit of her fault too, just a little bit and so we hugged it out, we went to sleep next morning when we went on a date, coffee date, I told her, I said, I actually did not mean to disrespect you when I fall asleep, it's just when you don't talk for two hours, I fall asleep <laughs> and she said, I didn't mean to hit you. Um, it was just it was really hurting to me that you dare to fall asleep knowing that I can't sleep if I am angry I was like well it seemed like I handled it just fine you should have just maybe and then I realized like no 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 you and I was like yes yes babe and so we made a promise and it's been seven years that if we're angry if we are fighting we don't go to sleep until we finish it now if sometimes Sometimes, because in marriage there's three problems. There's the proactive problems, reactive problems, and radioactive. Radioactive is stuff you can't talk about. You won't fix it in one in argument. It's like heavy stuff. And so in the heavy stuff, what typically we do is we just bring the stuff to, to the minimum where both of us can sleep knowing we still love each other. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to poison and like stab each other during the sleep. Everything will be fine. And next morning we'll resume when we're better rested. And so, but you have to not go to sleep angry. If both of you go to sleep angry, if the other person sleeps on the couch, you sleep in the other room and it's always that and you're angry, you're tense. You have to listen to the Bible. Bible says, do not let sun go down on your wrath stay up and husbands let me give you just the practical tips on how to dissolve this one how to fight like a pro is approach a woman and touch her no don't push her don't pinch her just gently touch her it's crazy what a touch does to a woman especially when she's now if she's one of those like, don't touch me <laughs> you you might want to stay away <laughs> So I'm just gonna gonna share what, what, what worked for me and stuff so, because my wife is the opposite for me like if we're arguing I don't want to touch her because I'm by, by accident I might like break something you know <laughs> and so I don't want to touch her but what she taught me she's like if you could only just come in and just touch me gently on my shoulder and reassure me that everything's gonna be okay and so when you start with that but that means you got to get control of your stuff when your wife is mad it doesn't mean you're a horrible husband it's just because you got a woman Woman, woman is a woman. She has her stuff. It's completely fine. Don't take it personally. It's not, it's not because you're a terrible husband. It's just because you have an amazing wife. And so, but the second thing after that, and that's typically with brothers that we struggle with, is that we try to be sarcastic when we are fighting. Now, your humor attracted her to you, but you're typically not that funny. 
you're definitely not funny when you're fighting let me ask you a question would you consider Jim Carrey funny if he would laugh at your mom's funeral and crack jokes would you consider a comedian funny if they would come to a funeral of somebody that you loved and crack jokes no you would think they're crazy man when there is a tense moment world war three is about to happen it's not a time to be funny you're not funny you got to understand that you got to be sober minded you got to be vigilant and you got to be you got to put on like like Mordecai in the bible like put ashes on yourself like come in broken with with reverence and i'm not I'm, i know i'm being a little bit funny in this right now but you really have to be heartbroken when a woman sees that you're serious when a woman sees that you're like you're understanding the weight of this problem like you understand this is like life and death issue and you're approaching this like that it makes you feel like okay i'm not the only one that's hurting he, he at least understands i am hurting i can i cannot tell you the second one was the hardest thing for me to be delivered from my goodness through sarcasm how many of our fights could have been fixed in five minutes and they had to last five hours because i was such an idiot i love i'm not funny guy at all it's just when we are getting into an argument i turn on stupid and i start cracking things that and i think they're funny she looks at me she's like you're stupid she's like why don't you stop that she's like you were you were you were moving so good it's like why did you slip from the right path of righteousness and i keep laughing laughing and i know it's wrong but i can't stop it's coming out naturally it's so creative i feel this creative juice is like man somebody needs to record this this is rhyming i'm losing my wife but i'm gaining the gift of humor flowing through me come on all the all the wives will admit sarcasm doesn't help right third one is validate her feelings when she's hurt and she's complaining that's good she's sharing her feelings one of the things that we can do as men is that is this instead of come in and say you feeling that cry a river build a bridge get over it you can't come in and say well uh oh i know why <laughs> you told me that the mon monthly cycle thing messed up with your chemicals and stuff like emotionally not stable that's that's why that's why i know you're mad it's, it's because you have a period it, in three days everything will be fine anytime you blame women's feelings on her monthly or if you're super spiritual you're like i've really been sensing this this spirit over you the spirit of like this anger je spirit of je je jealousy i got it jealousy i see you're jealous over other women and i really think we, we need to deal with that right now you, you want me to lead you in a prayer of renouncing can i sign you up for inner healing in our church you really you really need to go to prayer line anytime you shame her with her feelings even if it's demon behind it even if it's a monthly period, even if it's a generational curse, stop being a counselor and a deliverer and a Derek Prince in your marriage. You validate those feelings, something like this. So you feel like I've been ignoring you. I'm really sorry about that. I'm really sorry that you feel like that. Now don't, don't admit anything yet. Don't sign up for anything. I'm really sorry that you're feeling like that. You're not saying what she's feeling is right. You're just saying that you're sorry that she's feeling that. If right away causes the woman to feel loved and appreciated you're hearing her and then this is the magic comes in ask the Lord for wisdom to find your one percent of the fault of why she's feeling that you're not responsible for more than that just one percent remember she's responsible for 99 but you're responsible for one percent of the fault like that one that you didn't respond to the text message like the one where you didn't bring roses you didn't say I love you in the last four days you didn't kiss her you didn't hug her you didn't spend time you were always so busy all of that it's so not important at all but you find that one percent that you are guilty of and you focus on that one percent and you exaggerate that one percent and you said how bad it was and you will never do it again and next thing that happens she will run to you give you a hug and says i knew i made a good choice that i married you everything is over amen